Hello, I'm Jules Roman with Yorkshire International. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare a CMA for a client. A CMA stands for Comparative Market Analysis. When you are trying to get a listing, you want to first value the home, and preparing a professional CMA is the best way to go about doing that. The CMA is prepared through the MLS. So the first thing you're going to want to do is log into the MLS, and then under the uh, My Matrix tab, you will find My CMAs. And in here, this is where you prepare a CMA for a client. And you can see I have 105 CMAs. But, so I'm just simply going to scroll to the bottom here, and I'm going to say, and under the task line here, I'm going to start a new CMA. So I click the start a new CMA, and the first thing we're going to need to do, after I click that like I mean it, is I'm going to have to put in the client. And so this is a new client. I don't think I have her in here, so I'm going to create a new client. And I happen to know her name is Linda Perez, P-E-R-E-Z. Okay. I don't have her email address, but I have to put something in here. So I'm going to just put my own email address, TCR. Get in there. TCR. Come on, computer, don't be slow. There I am. Okay. All right. And so it's, I do have a phone number. I can, it's a good place to store it, but that's my phone number. I don't need to put that in there. So I'm going to prepare this CMA. I'm going to print this out and bring this to her at our listing appointment. And so this is a good thing to do. And so I'm not going to be emailing it to her. I'm just going to print this out and I'm going to have this with me when I sit down with the client. So that's step one. And you just follow along these tabs right along the top here and go through these. And this will tell you, walk you through what you need to do. The first tab here is pages. Now I already have my default view to select the pages that I want in the CMA. There's a bunch of pages that you can select from, a lot of canned data and a lot of, a lot of fluff that you can add to your CMA to really give a big thick book of information. However, I don't like to give, well first of all I don't like to print a bunch of stuff out and also I want to kind of cut to the chase. So the pages that I like is I have the cover sheet with a photo, and I have to get a photo of the property. The next thing I have to do is um, summarize the comparables that I use, and then what adjustments did I make to those comparables? That's a really important step there. And then this is kind of fluff. It shows the list price and sales chart of the comparables. Um, then my pricing recommendation pricing recommendation, and this is one of the canned ones, benefits of using a realtor. It is a little propaganda, but it's, it's a good one to throw into your CMA. Finally, I'm going to use the CMA map, and that shows where all the comps are. So I've already done that. I can set that as default. I can restore defaults. I can upload custom pages. There's a lot that I can do within here to generate a really nice report. Okay, step one, we need to, we need to, talk about the subject property. Now this property has never been in the MLS. And so if it was, I can I can search it, I can search it for cross property in the MLS. And that's best because it has a picture of the property, has all the details about the property, and it's a lot of it's already done for you. In this case, this property's never been on the MLS, so I need to search it from the tax records. So I am simply going to search for a realist tax record, even though I don't like realist, but it's okay because it will just give me the basics. And I know the address is 1624, and then the street name is Oak. Okay, and should find it in Sarasota County. I select it. It's just near downtown. Nice home. Okay, so here it is. I select it, and I fill the information from the tax records. However, it doesn't give me all the as much information as I would get from an MLS search. The big information I want to get, okay, it says it's only a one bedroom, one bath, and the lot size is 0.13. The square footage is an important thing here, and it's not listed. So I have to refer to the to the IMAP. And so I went into IMAP, and so this is everything about the property from the tax records, and I can show that this thing is only eight. 843 square feet and so 843 square feet um, is pretty small in fact that's almost too small and so I want to I want to look at that to see if any any improvements have been done over the years because 843 is awfully small I mean it is a small house um, 
and when I look at the picture, I can't tell if there's any other buildings. So the way I can look at this, just to kind of make sure, is I'm going to click the tax ID number. This is going to open Sarasota County Property Appraiser. And from here, this gives me straight from the tax records. So this is Sarasota County. And this will give me a floor plan by clicking under Buildings, the Situs. And so this will show me the floor plan of the building that is in, in the records. And so I can see that it is truly 824 square feet main living area. And then there's an enclosed porch, 842. I round it up because it's 842.5. Thank you. Eight, and then we have 180 square feet. This might be an enclosed garage or porch. And if that's air conditioned, then that would change this square footage to be, um, I would add 182 at almost over 1,000. So, but right now I'm just going to use 842 or 843. I'm going to round up, and I'm going to put that under square foot heated. Additionally, the tax record says that this house is truly a one bedroom, one bath. Okay, so it's a it's a little a little cottage uh, right here in Laurel Park, 843. And that is what it is. Let's make sure the lot size is 0.13, and that looks about right. So it's a small house on a small lot in a great location. Okay, so that's about all I really need to, for the subject. I'm going to add a photo because that, that really makes it look nice. And so under Property Photo, I actually use Google Maps because I'm too lazy to have driven over there. And um, I used a Google, Google Maps, Maps picture um, from Street View, and I think... I think I just put that in pictures. Where did I put that? Uh, 1843 details. Bear with me. Uh, date. Eight, there it is. 1624 Oak. Okay. So I just browsed to it. I double clicked on it, and my computer's awfully slow. It should be coming. There it comes. Okay. There's the house. And as you can see, it's a cute little house, a little porch, and I don't know if that um, porch in the back is, is enclosed or not. Something we can talk about. At least we can't come in prepared. So that's the subject. Here's the cover page. Really, there's I can modify this if there's anything I want to do to the cover. It already is, all my default is in there. It's, um, you know, I could put more information about the contact, but that's good enough. This is the meat and potatoes, this comparables tab. This is where we go in and select our comparables. Now, given the fact I know where the property is, I know how big it is, I'm going to look from, for comparables from the MLS. I click the button that says Add from Listings, and now I'm doing just an MLS search. And I want to look for active, pending, and sold in the last year. So I changed that going back to 365 days. And now I am going to... Um, look specifically for single family homes. And so property style is residential and it's a single family home. Okay, so my, and I also want to look um, for homes that are small. Now, as you can see, this is not a default field. I have added these fields to search for in this window. It's not a default field in here. So if you want to add the square footage to narrow these things down, and I just want small houses that are going to be like 600 to um, 1,200, let's just say. And they do not have a pool. Okay, so those are some things that I'm searching for. And now, the most important thing is, where is this property? This property is located in Laurel Park. So I'm pretty much going to limit the search to Laurel Park. And so this brings up a map. Now, I happen to know where Laurel Park is. And I'm not going to go across 41, and I'm not going to go across 301. The comps must come from this area right here in Laurel Park. So I'm going to zoom in on this area where the subject property is located. And like I said, this is Laurel Park right in here. And, um, and so I am going to draw a rectangle that basically goes from Mound and 301. I'm going to go up almost to Fruitville. I'm going to go up to Ringling right about there. So that's the area. The house is located like right about here, right about in the center of that. So, and I just happen to know that because I know know the area. But if you if not, you refer to a map. Okay. So I put my criteria in. I'm looking for active, pending, and sold in the last year, and I'm looking for smaller homes that are 600 to 1,200. Okay. I have a problem. I only have two matches, so that's not enough to build a CMA on. 
So this is, I'm going to have to open up my criteria because I can't generate a number with only two solds. I have two solds, and these are going to be very indicative of this. One sold for 452 and one sold for 250. That's a big, that's a big stretch, but we're talking 439 per square foot or 237. I need at least three comps. Um, so I'm going to open up my criteria. So I go back to criteria. And so before I select these as comps, I need more. So this square footage is uh, perhaps too limiting. I'm going to go from 500 because I'm going to adjust for square footage. So I'm going to go up to 1400. Let me see what that does for me. Okay, I got three results. I don't like that. And so I'm even going to go back a little further. I'm going to go back a year and a half. So I'm going to go 520 days back. Um, okay, I got five matches. Let's see what I have here. So five is good if they're all sold. I really need three sold comps and a three good sold comps. Okay, I have five sold comps by going back. And I look at these square footages, and yeah, some of these are really small. These little plit, that's the same one on Devonshire on there twice. Um, I don't know why that's on there twice. And so, um, <laughs> and so I'm going to select all of them with the exception of the first Devonshire here. And I'm going to add, I'm going to, so I selected them. I selected four comps. I'm going to add these as selected. These are the four comps that I'm going to use. Some are bigger, some are smaller, and um, but they're all good comps. And so here they are. And I can see where they are by clicking this map button. And we can see, okay, so Devonshire, the property is located right here on the corner of Rawls and Oak. And so it's like right, I think it's right there. And, um, or maybe it's right there. Or maybe I can't, it's one of the, it's one of those corners, but this property is kind of a special one. This is actually Burns Court, so I, I got to treat this property a little differently. This number on Burns Court, that's that's kind of a special little enclave there because they are semi-commercial. Um, so that one I I might um, I might want to adjust. Now, do you notice this here? Warning: the subject property could not be mapped. I want a little pin on here that shows where the subject property. So I need to go back and do that. But before I do, I need to know where this is. And I'm looking at IMAP here. And so this is north, obviously. So there is Oak and there is Rawls. So this is on the south, southwest corner of Oak and Rawls. And so I'm going to manually place the map pin there. So when I go back to subject, that's a tab that I can do in here. And I can go right in here and map location. I can locate it manually by clicking this button that says locate. It's going to bring up the map. I'm going to zoom in on my location, which is right about here. Okay. Okay, there's orange. I want a little too close. So this property is right there, okay, on the corner of Rawls and Oak. And so I can just click it. I just dropped the pin there. I'm done. So that's where the property is located. I put a little pin on the property. And so now when I go to my map tab, I will see the subject property located um, along with the comps. Okay, so there's my subject. Now I can see these comps. And even though this one is close, this is kind of a special case on Burns Court. That's right next to the movie theater there. Um, so I'm going to treat that one just a little differently. Uh, these two are really good comps. Those are going to be really fabulous comps. Those are especially this one in Devonshire. That that's a small house. It's it's on the same almost on the same block. That's a really good one. So those are that's where they are. So now I need to make my adjustments. But before I do so, I want to get a sense of what the price per square foot of these things are. So I went back to the comps, and I can see that these things. Sell price per square foot. If I click this, it'll just order by sell price per square foot. Lafayette sold for 237. Um, Ohio sold for 374. Burns sold for 439. And the Devonshire one, because it was so small, remember, because it was small, that really sold for the lot value. Because these lots are valuable, it doesn't. The square footage doesn't mean as much as the base. Uh, lot price. So that's why there's a big disparity. This one seems awfully low. I just want to take a look at this property. 
and why was it so low? Let's see. I, I can look at the pictures and just kind of see if it's cute or not or if it's, you know, trashed. And these pictures, you know, blah, 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 blah. There's no interior photos, so I can't really I can't really tell. Um, blah, blah, blah. Ideal for your new dream home. So this is probably this is a teardown. So that that gives me a really good sense of what the true lot value is. So the base lot value, if I go back to my comparables single line display, and I select that, I can go to Jules display or my single line display. This is a custom display that shows me the list price per square foot versus sell price per square foot. So the lot, 250000 for a very small lot. I suspect that the lot size in this case is also an eighth of an acre, 0.13 and 0.16 okay so it's a little bigger than our subject property but but it's a little further out it's not as good of a street as oak oak is a fabulous street so i'm going to say that the lot price if this were a teardown giving no value to the home i'm going to say is about 300 okay so that's just something you want to get a, a feel for beyond that i want to look at the price per square foot um that devonshire one you know, sold for 330 and there was hardly any square footage. So I'm going to say that if this were a teardown, and I suspect when I look at the description on this Devonshire one, it's going to say teardown. In fact, I, I'm pretty familiar with that house. I think it is. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Build the home of your dream. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's um, that garage to be cottage, cottage and uh, garage to be demolished. Okay, so there you go. So 330 for this lot and this lot size is 0.12 so this is a great comp for just the land however this house is cute um, I think it is I haven't been inside but I'm gonna assume that it's cute so when I look at these comparables to come back to the single line display and go back to Jules display and when I look at these properties that have sold I'm gonna organize this time by price okay so the two properties that we both deem to be teardowns are, are the Lafayette and the Devonshire. Now we're looking at Ohio, which is very close, and this one on Burns Court, which is a kind of a special, special. And these sold for 400, you know, uh, sell price, almost 374 to 439 per square foot. And I'm going to say that, that I'm going to use $400 as a square, per square foot to kind of make an adjustment. And I'm also going to adjust the fact that these two were teardowns and these two weren't. So this is where I make, this is where the valuation really comes in. So those are my comps. Now I need to adjust them. And so the, this, this program is very easy to do that. Once I've deemed that a price per square foot to make an adjustment is $400 per square foot, I can simply put in square foot heated 400 and look at this, voila, it calculates. It subtracts, it adds, it subtracts, and it adds, or subtracts again. Um, all these homes were built in the olden days. These are all 1920s. This one's the newest, but there's no adjustment there. The lot size, I'm going to say that this lot, uh, an acre, if, if, a, if, if an eighth of an acre is worth 300, 330000 then an acre is going to be an acre is going to be eight times that which is I'm gonna call it 2.5 million I can just put 2.5 million in here and it will make adjustments for me so this lot that's bigger 0.16 we subtract 75,000 just because lots a little a little bit bigger this one's a little bit smaller this one's a lot smaller on Burns Court so we make an adjustment there but that one's kinda of special and I, and I told you about that, so we're going to come back and revisit that. None of these homes have pools, so there's no adjustment there, but if there were, that's where, where you could. Now, let's talk about bedrooms. Okay, this one is only one bedroom, and these others are two. Okay, I usually put a $5,000 adjustment in for a bedroom. That means I need to subtract 5000 for each one of these comps because they had bedrooms. Bathroom. Same thing. I usually do five thousand. It depends. I mean, it's a fancy house, a different story. Big, you know, big bathrooms. But that will make adjustments. So this one, that's a two bedroom, two bath versus a one one. Other than the square foot, I'm make, making a ten thousand dollar adjustment there. And so you can see how these adjustments kind of fill in. 
Um, they're all in the same neighborhood, so I'm not really going to... I mean, I can make some adjustment for that one that is on Lafayette because that's not as good. But before I do, I want to look at this adjusted price because this is where this is where things get out of whack. So this one Lafayette, in fact, is a teardown, and it's not as good of a location. So um, there's no place to make an adjustment for that, uh, for location. So uh, under subdivision name, this is where I'm really going to make an adjustment. And this is where I can, I can really steer the CMA because right now I'm getting an average price of 330 but that's brought down by this 80 This is This is a complete outlier. I almost want to take this comp and throw it away. In fact, since I said I need only three comps, I always start with more. And then if I get something that's an outlier, like I would almost, if I had five, I'd want to get rid of this Burns Court and I'd want to get a rid of Lafayette I want and um, and I want it to come in between these two numbers now you see there's a big disparity that's because of this square footage okay the square footage here is taking off 122,000 just because this thing's 200 square feet bigger and so that's uh, that's an aberration so I, I I'm gonna change this to make this because that square price per square foot includes the lot so if I were to factor out the lot, the lot's a big part of the value of this property. So I'm actually going to change this to 150 per square foot, and that's actually going to change my numbers. Now, now we can see these two comps that I think are, are very close. These are the ones that are really driving it. I want, I want the resultant to come in somewhere between these numbers. I'm going to say, I, I, because, these are the two closest comps in terms of um, size. And remember, Devonshire was a teardown. This house is not. And this Ohio place could be. So I, this Devonshire is going to go up. I'm going to, for these two that are teardown, I'm going to give them um, $75,000, $100,000. Uh, I'm going to give them $80,000, 80000 in both cases. Because let's just say they were remodeled, a full remodel for $80,000, and now they wouldn't be a teardown. Now that price discrepancy is even bigger here, and that is something we have to kind of address. This Lafayette, I still think I'm going to throw it away. So when I go back to my comps, Lafayette is it's it's the furthest one away. It's not exactly as good of a location, so I just select it, and I'm going to remove it. So we're now basing this on only three comps. And like I said, that's the minimum, three sold. There's nothing for sale in this range. There's nothing pending in this range. It is what it is. So that's good for the seller because there's no competition. So let's go back to our adjustments and look at our adjusted price. And this is where you can really steer this thing to where you want it to go. And I'm saying that Devonshire, now that I added 80000 for remodeling, is probably the best comp. Um, Ohio is a good comp as well. But remember, both of those properties, and I adjusted only $10,000 for the fact that they were, well, this is a 2-2, and that's a 2-1. Um, so I'm, I'm getting closer on it. I would like to make an adjustment for this Burns Court. Being 544 as an adjustment, the fact is that's a special location. So this is where I, I said I'm going to come back to this. And because it's in Burns on Burns Court, I'm going to say that's $100,000. So I'm going to subtract $100,000 from it just because it's on Burns Court. That brings these numbers pretty well into line. And so now you can see I have a low of 374 to a high of 466. That's okay because we're working off averages. That puts my average at 42028 as an adjusted price. Before my adjusted, the averages were 404. There was a wide, um, a different range here uh, from well, there's a wider range from 330 to 452. But after my adjustments, before my adjustments 404. After my adjustments, the average price is 428. I'm going to go with the average price. Um, I might, I could go with the median price. And I might, simply because there's no competition, that might be a good place to start. 
And so until I see the house and, and, and so it's good to know that this is the data without seeing the house. It might be beautiful inside in which I'm going to go to the high side or it might be pretty rough and needing remodel. And then I'm going to go to the low side, but I'm going to stay with this average price and I'm going to say 429 is a good price. So after my adjustments, this is where I go in the, in the pricing page and this is where you kind of, um, suggested list price. Um, Based on the comparable properties, we suggest a list price at 429.000. And I'm going to put the dollar sign in there. Okay? All right. And so that's pretty much it. We can add some notes. Um, and I'm just going to put a note. We look forward to seeing the inside of the home this CMA is based on exterior inspection only so that's a little caveat that I put in there so I haven't seen the house I haven't been inside but now I have some good idea what the comps are and uh, we can talk about this further so the final thing that you have to do is simply click this finish button and this will create the CMA and from here I could email it to the client, I can print it out, I can view it, I can do whatever I want. So I want to just take a look at this finished product. So I click the view CMA, it's going to be a PDF which I can download, I can print, I can, in fact I am going to print this out. Did you hear me say that? I am going to print this out. One of the few things that I'm willing to print is a CMA. Happy to print it. And so, um, so this is good data. And as you can see, it's got a nice format, blah, blah, blah. Um, and here are the summary of comparable listings. There's only three of them. This kind of summarizes them. Got pictures and details on these three um, as compared to the subject property. Puts that first. And then, uh, you know, here's your price graph, list versus sell price. You can see there was a big disparity in that one. Um, and then my pricing recommendation, just what I, um, just what I wrote in there. And finally, this is a little propaganda benefits of using our professional realtor. And here's that CMA map. And that's really it. And so that's a nice, um, concise report that I did for this client. And now I'm simply just going to print this baby out, take it over, and we're going to go get this listing. So that's how you prepare a CMA. I'm Jules Roman with Yorkshire International, 366-0000. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. Thank you.